So this morning, as we're thinking about ways that awkwardness might be showing up in our lives right now, I'd like to share with you a little personal story from a few weeks ago. Uh, our flower communion ceremony took place uh, a little bit earlier in May. And I was so excited because it was this in-person opportunity to get to actually meet in real life you, the wonderful people of Foothills with whom I've been connected over the internet for like nine months now. I couldn't wait to meet you in person. And I also knew that I would be helping facilitate this flower communion ceremony with my coworker, Lauren Farley, in real life as well. And so I had this brainstorm. I thought, okay, Lauren, I know that you have two elementary age kids who've been in virtual school all year long. I know I have one elementary age kid who has been in virtual school all year long. Why don't we come and bring our kids and then our kids could meet each other and make friends. So first I shared this idea with my nine-year-old daughter, Sarah. And I'll just say here, I am sharing this story with Sarah's permission. She thought it might be helpful for other people's learning, which I thought was a very generous perspective. So I asked Sarah, hey, do you want to go with me to Flower Communion? And you could meet Lauren's kids. Maybe you guys could play, hang out on the playground while we're doing Flower Communion. And I got a very clear no. She declined the invitation. So that's cool. I wasn't going to push it. So I was getting ready to head out, drive to Flower Communion, meet Lauren without either of our kids. And at the very last minute, like so last minute that it was definitely going to make us late. Sarah decided that she was gonna put her shoes on, grab a mask and come with me to Flower Communion after all. So that's great. Uh, we drove over, I introduced Sarah to Lauren and the very first thing out of Sarah's mouth was, I am so glad that your kids did not come. And I, saw Lauren's face just fall, just for a moment. She recovered really quickly. And me on the inside, I was, I died just a little bit. And I thought, oh no, here is my coworker who I really like, who I'm meeting in real life for like the fourth time. And my daughter greets her by telling her how glad she is that her kids didn't come. And so just as I'm like frantically trying to come up with something to say to smooth this all over, my daughter keeps talking. And she says that she is feeling really nervous right now about meeting other kids her age. And so coming to Flower Communion felt easier because she knew it would just be her and a few grownups. And then we stopped and calculated that during this year of pandemic and virtual school, Sarah hadn't played with another kid her age except for two times since last October. So feeling a little bit out of practice. And Sarah shared with us that the idea of hanging out with little kids or hanging out with a few grown-ups felt really comfortable, but hanging out with kids her age uh, felt a little scarier. The stakes were higher. And so I share this story because I think it's a great illustration of how when we move from that awkward moment into a place of honesty and vulnerability, that that honesty and vulnerability can really foster connection. So it helped us understand how she was feeling. Lauren and Sarah hung out the whole time at Flower Communion. Sarah had a blast meeting, actually, little kids and grownups. And by the time the whole gathering was over, we had a plan in place for Lauren's family and our family to meet up at a playground sometime. It just took a bit of a warm up and tolerating a bit of awkwardness and unknown. So with these thoughts in mind and thinking about all the awkward moments that we have already had or that we are inevitably going to experience as we start re-encountering each other more and more, reconnecting with relationships we haven't been in in person for a while and meeting new people, I want to invite you into a time of reflection, a time of prayer and grounding, 
So as we transition into this mode of being together, you might want to just take a moment and settle in where you're seated. You might wish to bring your attention to your breath. Feel yourself grounded wherever it is you're seated. And if these touch points feel a little awkward, a little self-conscious, a little out of the norm, you are right on time. So just keep rolling with it. This is a prayer for the awkward, for the interruptions, for the mixed signals, for the stumbles and stepped on toes, for all the best intentions, for playing it cool, playing it down, playing it up, and faking it till we make it. This is a prayer for our tender, awkward hearts and our searching, meaning-making brains, trying so hard to keep us safe, to help us belong, to detect our place in the order of things and personalities and neighborhoods and friendships and families and workspaces, needing love and needing space. The awkwards are not the end of the story. Those hot flushes of shame and surprise, the quicksand of insecurity, wondering if there's something wrong with us, if the weirdness can be repaired. The awkwards are not the end of the story. They are not the totality of the experience. Here is the true story. Our vulnerability makes us beautiful. Our honesty is powerful and connecting. Our bodies are miraculous and they have done an amazing job keeping us alive during a global pandemic. Our laughter is music. Our time will come. Our story is still unfolding. We are in process and we know how to make repair. We know how to create connection and we know how to sense into the next right step wherever we are. And in those hard to tolerate moments, may we find ourselves carried by a greater compassion, moved by a trust that love guides us towards a deeper coherence and connection, mm -hmm. that we don't have to do it all with our conscious brains as an act of will, that we are a part of a greater flow of love. May we offer ourselves and each other exquisite grace and care. We extend our care now out into the greater Foothills community, out to all those who are struggling and all those who are celebrating as the cycle of life turns for us all. Our love is with Becky Wagner, whose beloved partner, Harry Marincelli, died on June 1st. Our healing wishes are with Ronnie Campbell as she recovers from lung surgery. May love surround us and hold us all. Amen. <laughs>